Hey everybody, um, I wanted to make this video to show you how you can use a tool called Mixamo to import animated characters into a Unity app and then how you can trigger those animations using the VR toolkit. So um, let's start by finding an animated character. So to find an animated character, the best tool that I have found, which is still free for now, it's glorious, is called Mixamo and it's from Adobe. Just go to www.mixamo.com and then it'll take you to the Mixamo homepage. So from here, they have some characters and they also have animations you can add to those characters. So start by just picking a character that you like. For example, uh, Louise. Okay, when you've got your character, then uh, you can also find a few animations and you can download them. So I'm gonna click on the animations tab now Mixamo can work with any humanoid character. It's also possible to upload your own character and then Mixamo will do its best to rig it so it has bones like a human does. If it's not a very humanoid character, this sometimes works in very strange ways, but um, for humanoid characters, it's quick and easy. So um, let's say uh, in my VR app, I want my character to maybe clap and cheer when I do something good. So I'm gonna get three different animations. I'll get an idle animation, and then I'll get a clapping animation and a cheering animation. And as you can see, there are hundreds here to choose from. There's 52 pages and there's probably more. Um, so use the search tools to find an animation you like. First, I'm gonna get an idle animation, I-D-L-E. And um, let's see, I can browse through the animations to see what they look like on Louise. This one looks kind of sad. I'm not sure I want that one. <laughs> this one looks like kind of a classic idol pose, yeah? So let's start with this one. When I found one animation I like, I'm gonna click on download. And you can change the parameters of the animation and things like that. I'm just gonna um, download it just as it is. So when you download it, choose FBX for Unity and make sure you have width skin. This is really important so you get the textures and materials associated with this character. And click on download. And you're gonna end up with um, some character files that end up in your downloads folder. Okay, so it's CH07 non-PBR, blah, blah, blah. Um, let's get a couple more animations. So we've got an idle, and let's get a cheer animation. Here's a few different cheering ones. This one's kind of rocking out cheering. This one's uh, shaking arms vigorously cheering. Um, this one's a standing clap. So we've got a whole variety to choose from. Um, I'll go ahead and do these cheering with uh, two fist pumps. So there we go. We've got this one on Louise. Looks really fun. Good dancing move. We'll download this one. And again, FBX for Unity with skin. Okay, and then I'll get one more. I'll get a standing clap on Louise. I'll just get this clapping pose. It looks super cute. So we'll download this one. Again, FBX for Unity with skin. Okay, so we've got three different animations that we downloaded. Now we're going to bring them into Unity, and I'll show you what to do with them from there. So um, once you've got your animations, they're going to be in my downloads folder, the default place where I downloaded them. So I'm looking for all of these that say CH07. We've got a breathing idol, a cheering, and a clapping. And um, I'm gonna go over to Unity and make sure I've got Project selected and Assets, and I'm gonna drag all three of those files into my Assets folder. If you wanna keep your things a little more organized, you could also make a separate folder for um, characters and animations. I am gonna make a separate folder for textures for these characters. So I'm gonna, uh, once I've got them exported by uh, dragging them into Unity, I'll go ahead and close this file browser now. I will now right click in this blank space in the assets folder and I'll do create folder and I'll call this one Louise textures. So when I make the textures it'll export them into that folder. Next um, here are my three different animations. I can see the idle, the cheering, and the clapping. Let me start with the idle and I'm gonna need to get materials on it because um, you'll notice here in a second, let me pan around in my scene. I'm gonna put Louise like kind of over here in a corner. So I'll pick up uh, Louise and drag it into the scene and put her right there. Notice how she's completely white. So she doesn't have her textures on her, we need to change that. 
I'm also going to rotate her 90 degrees. So I'll make sure I click on the main um, asset here, not the sub assets underneath it. And I'll just do a rotate around the Y. Nope, not 90. Let's do 270. And that'll bring her around facing the front. So again, completely white here. What we do to um, change, get the textures is um, I click on her here and then, um, how did I find it? Oh, I click on the, the asset down here in the assets folder. So not in the hierarchy, but down here in the assets folder. And then I get little tabs for model, rig, animation, and materials. I'm gonna start on the materials tab and there's a button that says extract textures. Click on that. And then I've made my folder called Louise Textures. So I'll select the folder. And then that looks a lot better. I'm also going to extract the materials just in case some of the materials um, end up being um, weird or transparent. So let's extract materials. Same folder, Louise Textures. And now um, looking much, much better and cleaner. The lighting's a little bit strange, so parts of her body don't look um, quite the same, but it'll look good once it's imported into VR. So, so far, so good. So the next thing we need to add for Louise is an animator controller, and the animator controller will have the different animations. So um, what I'm gonna do here is uh, back in the assets area, in the project area, right click, and we're gonna do create and then I'm looking for animator controller right here. Okay, and I'll call this Louise animator. Okay, and now when I double click on the animator controller, I get this little animator editor. I'm gonna now make Unity kind of big here. Looks like there's a fix now button. I should fix now. <laughs> okay, so I get the animator editor. And so um, it shows you, this is a state diagram for animations, so you can make one animation uh, trigger another and trigger another. Um, I'm basically just gonna have three states that do three different animations. So first there's the idle pose. Idle pose is usually loop, so I'm gonna have the idle pose like loop on itself. What I do here is I right click somewhere in this blank area and I'll say create state and do empty. And then in the um, inspector, I can change the name of it and we'll call this idle. And then I need to give it a motion. Click on the little bullseye next to where it says motion. And there's my three animations. I'm gonna click on the breathing idle. I do recommend you have at least one idle animation that's just gonna run in the background whenever your character's not doing anything. So that looks good. And now I need to make the transition so the idle state loops. So I right click on idle and say make transition and it gives me an arrow and I'll just drag that arrow back onto idle and click and so idle is just going to loop on itself. Okay. Next I'll make two other states. I'm going to make cheer and clap and I'm going to make cheer and clap simply go to idle when they're done cheering and clapping. So I'll repeat the process of making a state. Right click, create state, empty, click on the new state and I'm going to call this one cheer. I'll click on the bullseye to give it a motion and I'll give it cheering. Okay, and then, um, oh, let me, I didn't change the name correctly. Cheer, enter. Okay, now it's named correctly. And then right click on cheer, make a transition. It gives me an arrow, drag it over to idle. Okay, I'll do the same thing with one more state that I'll call clap, create state, empty, give it a name, hit enter so it commits, click on the bullseye and choose clapping. Okay, and then right click on clap, make transition, take it back to idle. So cheer and clap will just run once and then they'll go back to the idle state. Good stuff. Um, and next, I can go back to um, the room. Okay. So uh, at this point, oh, I forgot, up in the tab, it added a little editor for the animator. Just click on the tab for scene and it takes you back to the scene. So we've got our animator controller all set. One other step we need to make sure we do is um, add the animator to our character. So I click on Louise in the hierarchy and uh, I'll zoom out so I can see her there. Click on Louise in the hierarchy and then click on the animator right here and just drag it into Louise's properties in the inspector and drop it there. So now the um, animator is attached to her. 
I can also click this box that says apply root motion, which means as soon as the game loads, she'll start in that idle pose, which is the root motion of the animator. That's the thing that's entered into from the entry state. So um, we should be good to go. Next, we're gonna do a tiny bit of scripting, just a little code. Um, so I'll show you what that looks like here. So first, I'm going to uh, right click in this assets area again and do create and then hover over C sharp script. So I'm going to call this the um, run animations and it's run capital R animations capital A kind of camel case um, and I need to edit this script. It's thinking, hold on a second. <laughs> okay, right click on it and do um, Actually, let me go ahead and double click on it. Okay, and it, for me, it's gonna open up Visual Studio. If it opens up a different code editor like Mono, that's just fine too. Now I'm gonna pause here to make sure I've got the code sample correct, so hold on one second. Um, here's the code that you need to trigger an animation. So um, what you do is when you uh, first open this run animation script, you're gonna notice a, um, a class called run animations, and it has a beginning curly brace at the beginning of the class, and then an end curly brace at the end. Next, you're gonna see two functions, void start with an open and closed curly brace and void update with an open and closed curly brace. Start is all the things that will run once at the very beginning of uh, when it runs the program, and then update will run over and over again um, continuously. We're going to add a new function right below this last curly brace and void update. Be careful, you do not want to add it after the end of this curly brace right here. That would be outside of the class and you want this function inside the class. So right after this curly brace and void update, you're gonna add these lines of code. This is a function, you do public void, and I'm gonna call this start clapping because this will run the clap animation. And then there's an open closed parentheses with game object, game object G inside. This game object, object will be the character that does the animation, in this case, our character Louise. So three lines of code inside it. We do this to declare a variable, which is the animator controller. Um, we set that animator controller to the animator of the component here. So you can see it's g.getComponentAnimator. That's this game object. It gets its animator. And then it's going to play the animation called clap with capital P play, and then parentheses, double quotes, clap with a capital C. Notice it has to match, if I go over to my animator in Unity, this is clap with a capital C. That has to match this text in here, clap with a capital C. I'll slide this to the side so that you can see it, okay? Um, so this is the code to run the clapping animation. You may have guessed what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna copy and paste this function down here so that I can run the cheering animation. Start cheering, and then instead of clap, I'll do cheer with a capital C, just like this text down here. Okay, finally, I'll click this little uh, set of floppy disks that says save all. It saves everything, and then I can minimize this. I won't close it completely, but we'll minimize it. It compiles it, and things look pretty good. So next, I'm gonna go to the scene right up here and click on my apple. So when I grab the apple, I'm going to have Louise do uh, clapping. And if I grab like the orange, I'll have Louise do cheering. So to trigger that animation, we're gonna scroll down a little bit and inside XR grab interactable on the apple, there's this little triangle that says interactable events and you can open that. And these are the behaviors that will happen when you interact with the apple. You can see there's hover, so when you're hovering over the object or your hand like in, intersects with its collider, these events will happen. But what we want is select. Select is when we actually grab the object. And I'm guessing select entered is when you grab it, and select exited is when you put it down. So any events you put inside this list are events that are going to run when you grab the apple. So in order to make our animations run when we grab the apple, this is what we do. We take the run animation script from down here inside assets, and I'm gonna add it as a component to the apple. So I pick it up here and drag it over to the inspector until I get the little uh, cursor that shows I can add that component. And there's the run animation script. Next, I go to the select entered um, uh, event, and I click on this little plus, and we're gonna add to the list. Notice we can't select a function 
we pull this down and it's either runtime or editor and runtime. We're just going to do runtime only. And then for the object, pick up your run animation script, drag it into that box for the object, and let it go. Now you can see the function uh, box is not grayed out anymore, and I can pull this menu down, and I can see run animations shows up, and then I have my two functions start cheering and start clapping. So I'll have Louise, I don't remember what I said before, I'll have her start clapping when I pick up the apple. And then lastly, it asks me for a game object parameter because that's in the function. That's going to be Louise. So I go back over to the hierarchy and here she is, she's called CH07 non-PBR breathing idle. I pick that up and I drag it into that box that says none game object because that's the object that's going to start clapping. Okay, same process we'll repeat with the orange. So I'm going to click on the orange, and we first start by taking run animations, the script, and dragging it into the orange as a component. We find select entered, click plus. Um, we're going to grab run animations and drag it into none object, pull down no function, and then it's going to be run animations, start cheering. I need a game object, and that will be Louise, so I'll grab the Louise object and drag it into none game object. That should be everything we need to do. I'll test it to make sure it works on mine, but as you get into your, um, your VR app, now if you physically grab the apple, you should see Louise start to clap, and if you grab the orange, you should see her start to cheer, and then when she's done with those animations, if you look back, she'll just go back to idling over and over again. So that's the end of the tutorial. I hope this is helpful to you. Um, enjoy the rest of your coding in Unity.